So hello and welcome to the video. I wanted to make a video about how I make videos and as I was writing the script I realised that I'm actually making two videos. This is the second of those videos in which I'll talk about the software that I use and the online resources that I tap into. The first video talked about the equipment that I use and I'll put a link to that in the description below. When I was starting my YouTube journey I couldn't find any videos that covered this topic explicitly so I hope it will be useful to some. If you're here for the airplane videos hopefully you'll enjoy seeing how I make those airplane videos. So stick around. Hi I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years I've travelled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So hit subscribe and perhaps you'll pick up some hacks, hints and tips to make your next trip better. The most important software that you'll need and probably the biggest decision that you'll take is which editing software you use. I don't much like Apple. There's a reason why they're one of the most valuable companies in the world. Some of those reasons are excellent design quality and a very strong brand, but Apple uses those advantages to create a very high pricing structure and therefore make very, very high profits. As I've said before, I'm not one for substance over quality, and although I did own a few of the early iPhones, it's probably been a decade now since I last owned an Apple product. I just don't see the value and very often the dominant brand in a particular marketplace doesn't offer the greatest product in that space, particularly if they were the first mover. So as I said in my first video, I have a Xiaomi Mi 9 phone, which is about half the price of the Apple iPhone, and I think, for what I use it for, it's just as good. But for those of you in the Apple universe, iMovie is the logical choice for you as editing software, as I believe it's included for free in most Apple software packages. So my choice of editing software was made with iMovie being a complete non-starter. I had never used any editing software before, so was a complete novice. So I did what every sensible person should do, and I went to YouTube. I watched a lot of videos, but also searched more widely on the internet, and time after time the same answer came up. DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve Studio is a full-featured, professional quality editing package that is actually used to make Hollywood movies. DaVinci Resolve is a cut-down, entry-level version of that software, but even so, it's still richly featured and contains everything any YouTuber could probably want, plus more. And the best part? DaVinci Resolve is free. The full studio version is only $295. I even saw reviews where the free DaVinci Resolve software was deemed the best package to use when up against products costing as much as £250. So even as a free product it is better than many of the paid products that are available. So I picked it and I am thrilled that I did because it's great. But it is not an easy package to just pick up and use. If you've used other editing software you'll probably hit the ground running. But if you have no previous experience it's quite daunting. But I persevered and now, 25 videos in, there's nothing I've wanted to do that I haven't found a way of doing, even if I needed to watch a fair few YouTube tutorials to work out how to do things. I felt when I started that if I learnt 1% of the software with every video that I made, inside 3 months I would be competent and inside 6 I would be proficient and I think that's pretty much what's happened. But there's plenty more to learn. I've barely dipped my toe into colour grading and there is a whole world of audio enhancements plus mind-bending special effects that I've still not touched. It's a serious bit of kit and it requires a serious computer to run it, so bear that in mind. Two quick tips for newcomers. Work out how to optimise your media and do so before attempting any serious editing and work out where the cache files Cache files? Cache files are stored and clear them out at the end of each video, otherwise you will have a very bumpy experience and your computer will run out of memory very, very quickly. But DaVinci Resolve is an excellent product that I am thrilled to have found and I am excited to see how much more competent at it I will be able to get over the coming years. If you want to capture screen footage from your computer, such as the shots of DaVinci that you've just seen, then you'll need software called OBS Studio. This is also used by streamers and I believe is the best software available for all of your screen related recording tasks. I'm no expert and it was fiddly to get it to work, 
but there are relatively few options in the configuration and I just cycled through them until it worked. My phone, like most phones, has a very good screen recording capability, so you can always use that if you struggle to work out the OBS configuration for your laptop. For static screen images, I also use the snipping tool, which is a really handy built-in Windows tool that not that many people know about. Both OBS and the snipping tool have no regard for copyright restrictions that may be built into other software, so have that in mind if using those tools. Thumbnails are a critical element for a YouTube video, and anyone observing my desktop might notice it's lacking most of the software you'd expect to see for image creation, and that's because I use PowerPoint for my thumbnails, and lots of other stuff too. I used Excel, Word, and PowerPoint pretty much every day during my career, and also for a lot of personal projects too, so I've got fairly good at them. But even for novices, I think they're quite accessible and, and perhaps just as accessible, if not more so, than some of the digital editing software that is out there. Using PowerPoint for my thumbnails allows me to set up my background, which is a map of all of the flights I've ever taken, exported from openflights.org, overlaid with a blue square with 20% transparency to add to the color wash. I then snip any images I want to use using the snipping tool and then use the excellent background remover function in PowerPoint to isolate out the portion of the image I want to use. Overlay some text and your uncle is called Bob. It's not let me down yet and I quite like the look of the thumbnails that I produce. Let me know in the comments if you agree. I also used PowerPoint to produce my subscription nudger. These are inexpensive to buy online, and the ones you buy are of a better quality than what I've made, but I was playing in PowerPoint to see how close I could get, and was quite pleased with the result, so went with it. And by owning the process I can update it as needed, and I can also make variations as required. And that's pretty much all the software I use to make my videos. When I was starting my YouTube journey I also looked online for resources. There are a number of YouTubers who focus on their journey, Catherine Manning and Graham Steppen are two that stand out, and vidIQ is a channel that is dedicated to YouTube creators, which has a lot of good stuff for people in the early stages of their YouTube journey. But the most useful resource I found came from a YouTuber called Loki Doki. He was actually the first guy I ever watched on YouTube, and I remember being quite impressed that a 40-something bloke could make a living from videoing himself playing Football Manager. Loki made a 15-part series back in 2017, which covers many of the things you need to think about when starting and growing a YouTube channel. A few things are a little out of date now, but it is a very good resource and I do recommend it. A link is in the description below. I won't talk at length about the other resources out there, because they're fairly well known and others have covered them in great detail. Specifically look out for TubeBuddy and Social Blade, and vidIQ has a similar product to those. I've not used it myself, but I believe it's quite good also. So there you go, a run-through of the software and other resources I used to make these videos. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed it and got something from it. As always, subscribe if you're new, and leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. This channel will remain focused on travel, but I've enjoyed behind-the-scenes videos from other creators, and I hope you have too. Let me know in the comments, either way. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.